on today's Tech Help for Churches, naming podcast episodes and why I don't use episode numbers. Hi, and welcome again to another episode of Tech Help for Churches. This is the show where every week I help you with new media, social media, the internet, the web, etc. for your church. My name is Paul Allen Clifford. I'm your host, and I'd love for you to join the conversation, so just leave your question or comment below the video. That's great. Now, if you've subscribed, which you can do quite easily by going to trinitydigitalmedia.com slash subscribe, there's no good way to leave your comment underneath the video because it automatically arrives on your computer or on your uh, portable device with no effort whatsoever. So how do you do that? Well, just head over to trinitydigitalmedia.com slash THFC. Leave your comment there. So one of the problems that you see a lot of podcasters get into is naming their episodes. Now you'd think that's pretty simple. You just name it uh, episode one, episode two, etc. But while I have done that in the past, that's really not a great way to do it. It's also, by the way, not particularly great to name it a clever name. Now this goes for the podcast as a whole, which I really wish I had known this when I named my first podcast Techno Babble. First off, how do you spell babble? You're probably thinking it's B-A-B-B-L-E. It's not. It's like Tower of Babel. Yeah, that was a mistake. Anyway, so you can make that same mistake with episodes. In fact, some of my earlier uh, episodes were things like, uh, what would you do for a Klondike bar? Or uh, live from beautiful Jessamine County? Or things like that that really didn't help you whatsoever. So you don't want to be too clever with your podcast names. Now, maybe this works for Leo Laporte because he's got the number one podcast network, as far as I know it's still the case, in the world. And everyone knows that most of his shows are just weekly news shows. So maybe his SEO doesn't necessarily have to be as tight as a nobody like me has to have. But... uh, I've just found that that's not the best way to do it. It's not good to just rip out a single line from the discussion. It's not good to do anything like that. It's actually much better to go with a prescribed formula. Originally, I would start with uh, uh, the name of the show, then the episode number, then a title. It's really not great. Let me tell you why. Uh, Ideally, what you want to do is you want to go with something that is a keyword that illustrates what's going on in the show. So as I'm looking through my podcast episodes, because that's pretty much all I listen to in the car when I'm running, when I'm working out, sometimes when I'm working if I don't need to write because I can't listen and write at the same time, whenever I'm doing that, if I look at it and it is just a cutesy title other than the the examples that I gave earlier it really just doesn't help me what would help me is if I'm looking at a podcast and it says Facebook advertising oh that must be about Facebook advertising or if I look at another podcast and it's about using ProPresenter 6 to add song lyrics oh I bet that's about using ProPresenter 6 to add song lyrics. So, you see, having a, a, I know that it's going to seem boring, but a descriptive title is actually helpful. Also, you want to put that up front because Apple in the iTunes Store and Google both, when they're looking at something, the earlier it comes in the title, the more likely they are to think that it's important. So I always put that first. You'll notice as we're going through this podcast series, most of the time I start out with podcasting and then either a colon or a hyphen or something like that. And then the specific title. 
So that way, you know, okay, this is about podcasting still. This is what it's about, about podcasting. Then you'll notice I have a an abbreviation, a shortened form of the show title, and then a six-digit number. So the shortened, the abbreviation of the show, uh, in this case, THFC, tells you which of my shows this is, and the number helps you know if it's new or if it's old. So even if you don't look at the date on the file, you can tell based on the number, which is the date that it's released, what that is. Now let me further help you by breaking down the number. I start with the last two numbers of the year because I'm not going to be doing this for 100 years. Even if I was, which I don't think I am, it's not going to be the case that in 2116, I'm going to look back on files from 2016 and go, huh, now was that last week or is that today? No, I don't really imagine that they're going to have MP3s and MP4s in 100 years. I think we'll have stuff like that, but I think they'll be different. So I don't think that's going to be an issue. So the first two of the date, also, by the way, if you have uh, identical titles, if you just had the number in a computer, putting the year first is going to group them all by year. Then if you had the month, it'll group by the month within that same year. And then the two-digit number for the date will group them within that month. So, for example, today's show is uh, THFC, so that would be all the Tech Help for Churches. 16, all those made in 2016. Zero 01, all those made in January. 11, the files made on, or released in this case, on January 11th. So, that's what the stuff at the end means, and I put it uh, at the end on purpose. I used to stick it at the beginning. I put it at the end on purpose because sometimes titles are cut off on displays in uh, tablets, smartphones, MP3 players. Heck, even depending on how you're doing it, maybe even on a computer, it might be cut off, and that's much less important. And now, with it said, it's still important because could be that I've talked about podcasting multiple occasions, which I have. So it might help you, if you're not sure if you've listened to an episode or not, it might help you to know, oh, I don't remember the subjects I've listened to. I don't remember if I've listened to this one, but it was released last week, and the last one I listened to was released the week before. So there we go. So that's why I throw that in. Episode numbers, on the other hand, while it's helpful to know, oh, this person has been going with this podcast for a long time, that's helpful. It's less helpful when it gets to, yes, this is episode 135. How does that help you? Well, you know, the person's been doing it for a while, but it doesn't tell you how often it's released. It doesn't tell you if you've listened to it before, because chances are you're not going to remember if you'd listened to 135, 137, 145, 107. You probably won't remember that. You might remember whole number, uh, like the big even numbers, 100, 200, 1,000. You might remember those, but the all the ones in the middle, not so much. This is coincidentally why I'm not a huge fan of seasons. Because with podcasts, there's no break. They just start off at one point and end, and they just keep going in the middle. And uh, one of the podcasts I listen to, he's on like season eight, and I think I've only been listening to him for like three years. So I'm a little confused by this. And he had another season that was like three years before that, like three years of content. So he's been doing it for like seven years and 
yet he's got nine seasons. How does that even work? Doesn't make any sense to me. So I want to put that bug in your ear and hope, hopefully that will help you. And I hope this has helped you. If you like this content, you'd probably like my email newsletter. So head on over to trinitydigitalmedia.com slash gifts, G-I-F-T-S, and pick up a church tech gift of your choosing. Also, don't forget that this content is provided to you free. And if you need some church tech training, head over to trinitydigitalmedia.com slash store and pick up one of the resources I've created just for you. Until next time, this is Paul Allen Clifford with trinitydigitalmedia.com. Go out and change eternity.